Welcome to the Devin Nunes Podcast. Breaking through the political noise, separating fact from fiction. From the San Joaquin Valley, the breadbasket of the solar system. Here is your host, Devin Nunes. It's Devin Nunes. Welcome back for part two of the Roger Kimball interview. You can follow him at Parlor. Uh, you can also join the new Criterion and Encounter books that we talked about just a few days ago. Uh, Roger, it's great to have you back because on this episode, uh, we're going to talk about the broadsides that you're doing at Encounter Books uh, that I'm actually that I've written uh, one for, uh, and the purpose of it, and the history of it. I think it's it's yeah. fascinating and it's much needed in in our in today's times uh, because yeah. uh, what's happening on the internet, the World Wide Web, it is a sewer for left-wing activism. Uh, you know, we've had kind of the big tech oligarchs have been putting pressure on the big corporations yes. with the big government left wing that's essentially collapsed the openness of the of the World Wide Web. It makes it very, very that's difficult right. for someone like the New Criterion, my guess is, or Encounter Books, very, very hard to get picked up by the tech oligarchs anywhere. Yes. People are not going to find it. Uh, yeah. But what, what drew me to the broadside was, is I knew one thing, and that was that if I can get something small, easy to read, uh, that, that really encapsulates the last four years of things that have happened and get that in the hands of the American people so it's not going over the internet. Um, mm. And I thought I had developed something that was a new concept. Uh, mm -hmm. Roger, I didn't realize that yeah. you had actually been working on this for a few There's years. There's nothing new but, under the sun. <laughs> yes, and, and, and also, by the way, it's basically it's a it's a technology that's hundreds of centuries old and it was used exactly. uh, at the time of, of not only the beginning of this country but also in the United Kingdom. So, that's right. talk to us about the broadside, uh, its origins, and how you picked it up in Encounter Books. Right. Well, you know the the broadside originally it was a, a big sheet of paper and they, they were used for advertisements or uh, political proclamations all kinds of uh, public notices. And very soon, this, and it goes back to the 17th, even the 16th century, I think, but they played a really important role in the American Revolution. That's, that's what uh, uh, piqued my imagination. And uh, oftentimes they would be folded several times to make little booklets. And I thought, I think, I think we started, I think we published our first broadside in 2008, if I'm not mistaken, and we've done almost 70 of them now. Uh, and the idea was, as, as we say, our, one of the mottos is uh, you can read them in a sitting and come away knowing the best you can hope for and the worst you must fear. So what we wanted to do was find a way to inter we, we, we wanted not simply to comment on what was happening. To publish a book, it's, it's a, you know, it takes many months to get a book out. We wanted to be able to turn to writers who really knew a subject, have them write it very quickly and get it out as quickly as, um, as the current printing technology and distribution technology allows. Um, and, and my thought was, you know, we, you people would walk into a, a Barnes and Noble bookstore or a bookstore at a, an airport and see them stacked up and so on, uh, and that we would be able to intervene in the debate, not just comment on, on the debate. Well, Partly because of the process you were describing, um, that didn't happen. I, the the owner of one of the uh, big airport chains walked into a, a store and saw a bunch of uh, broadsides, and he noticed that the the name of Barack Obama was featured prominently and not particularly flatteringly on the covers of some of them. And uh, he ordered that they no longer be ordered. So we we had we found that it was an up it was uphill work, but. Yeah. Um, uh, it's 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 they've been very successful. And for example, we 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 published I think six or seven just in the last um, uh, couple of months on various aspects of the coronavirus, or what I like to refer to as the communist, the CCP virus, the Wuhan flu. Uh, we we published things about um, about the 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 our reaction to the to the coronavirus. We published things about the economy. Andy Puzder, the great um, uh, businessman, uh, uh, wrote about how we can get America back to work. Um, Brian Kennedy, uh, who used to run the Claremont Institute, this is a, a very recent one, talks about China's um, 
the Chinese Communist Party influence. Hold it up just a little bit higher, Roger. So, our, 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 so yeah, yeah, there you go. And you see these, these are very small. This, this, this one is just, uh, I think, 50 pages or so. Um, but it, it, really, it enables us to uh, get the word out very quickly. People can put them in their pocket. They're, they're, they, they become very effective. Um, and we, you know, we do all sorts of things. This one by, by Betsy McCoy on the, called The Next Pandemic is, um, is really about how we should prepare for, for the next uh, pandemic. There will be one uh, eventually. Uh, uh, the great Molly Hemingway wrote one about uh, the media and Trump. Uh, so we, they're, they're, it's all many, many, many uh, uh, subjects, but they're all focused on matters uh, of you know great public policy importance today. And um, uh, we found this that this these pamphlets uh, that we started off with the broadsides have been very effective. So we we republished uh, Michael Anton's great Flight ninety three essay. Uh, together with his uh, response to his critics. Many people um, hated Michael Anton's uh, piece. I think it was the most brilliant uh, essay on the run-up to the 2016 election. And, uh, you know, his image of, he said that, you know, we're, we're, it's like we're in the cockpit of uh, flight, United Flight 93, and our only option is either to storm the cockpit or die. And we might die anyway, but that's our only chance. And, and Michael Anton, just for those folks that don't know, he was uh, early on, he was in the Trump administration. Yes. But but he was, a I don't know if he was afraid, but there was a small group of people that were writing very sophisticated um, uh, essays uh, that were putting, that were kind of in the blogosphere out there through 2000, I'm guessing late 2015 and all through 2016. Um, but they didn't want to be attacked because these are people that had high paying jobs. Yes. They were very, yes. you know, they had... We talked a little yeah. bit about the Never Trumpers last week. That you know, so yeah. so that I think they were very nervous to not tell their friends uh, that they were supporting Donald Trump for president. Yeah. And so yeah. they wrote some very effective essays. And Michael Anton was one of the main writers. I forget what he called himself. He had a he called a, himself uh, Publius Decius Moose, who was a uh, was a, a Roman general. Uh, Livy talks about him, and he uh, he he. Um, uh, the, 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 the incident that Michael had in mind was that uh, uh, the, the two Roman generals before a great battle both had the same dream that, the, that, uh, that the, the, in the battle the next day, the general who, uh, uh, the, the, uh, one of the army's generals would die and that army would survive. Uh, so the, what uh, Decius Moose did is he, um, when he saw the battle going against him, he donned his purple cloak, ran into the, into the, uh, into the fighting and, and was killed. But the Roman army won the battle against the Samnites. And um, so that was, what, uh, that was what Michael had in mind. But he, did, he called him, you're absolutely right, Devin. He called it, he, he wrote under a pseudonym because at that time he was working for a uh, financial firm in, in New York City and he, which was a, a woke financial firm, you know, the, whose board had plenty of people who were, uh, had been in the- uh, Oh yeah, he, he would have been fired, of, uh, you know, whether well, he admits he was. this or not, he he's, was a, he's a brilliant fired. guy. He was. But... His, yes, so Bill, Bill Crystal, if I may uh, use that name, he, 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 blew, he blew Michael Anton's cover and he was then promptly fired. Uh, but oh, then he I got picked not, up I by didn't the, know he actually yes, got fired. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, but at, just as Michael Anton's book on the run-up to, um, I think it was published on Labor Day or just after Labor Day in 2016. That was, you know, was the most important essay of that election, and I, and I'm predicting, Devin, that uh, your essay for our broadside series called "Countdown to Socialism" will play a, a similarly invigorating role in the 2020 election to oh, a wake all. Well, you're, you're 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 very very kind, um, and it's kind of funny because you know I thought that I had I went all I was trying to do, Roger, was I just wanted to get the hell away from the tech oligarchs, the tech tyrants, and the mainstream media, uh, and I wanted to get something that was very easy for people to read, larger print, a few pictures that you know I came I'm not an artist, but I came up with the concepts, and we we hired a great artist to do some of the work um, that that people could read quickly. 
Um, but also, I wanted to keep the cost way down so that you're not paying, you know, thirty five dollars yeah. for something. I wanted to actually do something where you, if you wanted to spend thirty five dollars, uh, you can get five copies and you can give to all your neighbors. Yes. Um, yes. And so, you know, it's it's. I mean, Encounter Books is is a nonprofit. Uh, you know, so clearly, my goal was to was to to get this cost down really, really cheap. And and you guys are doing that. You can actually buy five copies for thirty dollars. I think. I believe that's um, right. I believe and, that's and, right on our and, website. Yep. And, and my whole goal is is back to the broad side, uh, and back to this early technology is I want people to be able to get those, read them, and pass them on to your neighbors, or buy a bunch of them. Uh, and and give them out to your your friends and family, uh, so that we can get around these tech oligarchs. I don't know if we have enough time um, or not. It's uh, it's very very troubling because one of the points that that I make in the book uh, is that it's not just that people are being poisoned. I don't have my cell phone here now, but uh, I like to always hold my cell phone up and say, you know, people yeah. are walking around like zombies, yeah. and they don't realize that. It's not just that ninety plus percent of the content that's being developed by the media is left wing and being done by left wing activists that are essentially yes. no more than, than than the propaganda arm of the democratic socialist party in this country that's yes. only half the problem now and this is what's really new in the book it's about this this filter this filter that is filtering to those devices that people are carrying and it takes that 90 percent of content and it moves it up to 99.9% .9 of what you see on your phone are coming from people that are propaganda artists for the Democrat Socialist Party. Absolutely right. Absolutely it's, right. And so that's why that's really what the book's all about. And, you know, thank you for your, for your kind words. Um, but it's very, very easy to read. And, um, you know, it'll be coming out coming out in a few weeks. And I'm glad you were there yes. to, 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 to be able to do that and have a, a, well, an opportunity we're, we're for really me to put pleased. this out. Yeah, we're really pleased. And I hope people... Uh, appreciate the fact that it uh, we deliberately chose red and yellow that's got a red background and yellow lettering just like Mao Zedong's uh, little red book but with uh, of course the opposite uh, the opposite intent well, it's, it's uh, mocking it's mocking yes, uh, the Chinese yes. Communist Party that's right yeah I mean um, it really is extraordinary that the extent to which um, uh, I won't say an interest but a, a kind of that people have been seduced into thinking that socialism is a good thing it's not it's it's wherever it's been tried, it's been a it's been a recipe for the immiseration of people, and it's mind boggling to me that people are taking it seriously now. And now with the, this this uh, this gargantuan tech, as you say, filter uh, that where you know you type in something, you're searching for something, you know Google will um, uh, using their algorithms will pre choose what you can see. Uh, you know, it, it's it's really quite extraordinary, and um, uh, you know, I'm I'm just so glad that you wrote this book. It's very well, and even and even Amazon um, is also problematic. You know, because everybody has an Amazon account. It's a it's a great company, except that the ownership and the people who write the algorithms are left wing lunatics. I, and I don't know if they actually believe in socialism or they just like being controlling the level levers of power, which is really what's behind this ideology. It's right. about, you know, controlling the masses. So yes. clearly, if you're one of the richest men in the world, you own the Washington Post, you get right. away with all this stuff. And I didn't even realize what a ripoff it is. Like if you're if you write books or a book publisher, I mean, you don't make any money off Amazon at the end of the day uh, because they're the ones that well, are really they, profiting. Off it gets of it. harder and harder. The margins and, get thinner and thinner. Yes, that's true. And not only that, you're essentially talking to people that don't exist when you're communicating with them. So if you go on Amazon right now, it'll say, you know, my book's not available till, I don't know, the end of September or something, which is totally yes. nuts because it will be right. available. But yeah. what I'm trying to do, and I think what, what EncounterBooks.com is doing, you know, not only can you get the book uh, immediately when it's going to be available and be shipped directly to you, you're cutting out Amazon. Plus, we're giving you this, you know, where you can buy five of them at a time. I right. mean, you can buy more right. if you wanted. Right. But, right. but you'll never be able to do that at Amazon. Um, so, so anyway, it's... Uh, uh, but counterbooks.com that's where you can go to get it yes and on the broad order side, today i have a, a just a just a question uh for you my guess is and i don't know if you've done the, looked at the history on this but the term broadside is a is a naval term yes um yes. It, it and in, in your kind of background and research right. is that where this term came well, from you know i i'm not sure i i a, a broadside refers to a simultaneous uh you know uh uh, cannon barrage from one side of a ship. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, That certainly was in the back of my mind. Was it, uh, I think actually broadside was originally a kind of corruption of broad sheet. Uh, But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But certainly in my mind and in the mind of the people writing in the uh, 18th century in the colonies, I think that there was a connection between uh, a naval broadside and the kind of polemical writing they were engaged in, the Federalist Papers, the Tom Paine's Common Sense, uh, the Anti-Federalist Papers, for that matter. These are, you know, these are pamphlets. They would appear in, in newspapers or, uh, you know, pass around in very cheap editions, and they, they change people's minds. I mean, the reason that the, a, a prominent reason that, that, that the re- revolution happened was because of these pamphlets. Yeah, and that was and that was actually because the development of the printing press at first only big governments, um, you know, big yeah. probably kingdoms and and dictators yeah. at the time of the time, you know, yeah. they were the only ones that could afford the original printing presses. But by the time that technology improved through the through the 16th century and the 17th century, so uh, by the time you know those were, it's almost a, like like kind of like the World Wide Web, but over several yeah. hundred years. So by the yeah. time you get to the 18th century, uh, the, the mid to late 1700s, printing presses are readily available. And so it's easy to produce these pamphlets, these so-called broadsides, yeah. and get them Absolutely. out to the masses. That's no, it's no accident, as our Marxist friends like to say, that uh, Ben Franklin was a, was a printer. That was his, his first sort of job. And, um, you know, he printed a lot of political stuff. Uh, and, you know, it was a great heyday of cheap newspapers. But it's, you know, this is, um, um, we like to think of the encounter broadsides as, uh, uh, as I say, intervening in important debates about issues that are, you know, really tremendous concern uh, to people right now. I mean, I I believe that this election uh, is the most important of my lifetime. And uh, the, the course of this election will determine, I think, whether America continues to be the land of the free and the home of the brave or something else entirely. Uh, a lot is at stake. And I think that um, a countdown to socialism, your, your broadside, really outlines a lot of the threats that, that we face. Well, I'm just glad you were there to, uh, that somebody was there with this concept already so that I didn't have to just do it you know, on my own. Um, right. you know, thank you that I had invented something new. Um, I should have known better. Uh, but, but, but I will tell you, uh, Roger, um, uh, you know, I, I'm just as we go through to try to help people, uh, you know, the American people learn that you cannot trust what's out there on the World Wide Web. It's why we promote Parler. It's why you, many of you may be yes. watching this on Rumble because it's an alternative to YouTube that's owned by Google. Uh, mm-hmm. The same is true. Uh, that, you know, uh, it's very unlikely that any of the mainstream media are going to, you know, even talk about this book because, you know, they even ignored my last book that I wrote, you know, 11 years ago. Uh, yes. they, they ignored it. Um, and so, but I think one of the things, and, and I got, I want to just close like, like with this little story that I think is kind of yeah. funny. And then I have a final question for you. Okay. So, but I think you were shocked, you know, in the, in the, in kind of socialism, I write that, you know, I'm very critical of Republicans, yes. including the including the the White House, for yes. even talking to these mainstream media outlets. Yes. Uh, and I, you know, and they should not be talking to them. And so mm-hmm. I, I thought it was kind of funny a couple of weeks ago when, um, you know, we were working with some of your PR uh, people about because yes. you know you have uh, access to you know you you promote your books to all the media outlets anybody yes. who will write them. Um, right. But I think you guys were a little shocked that I said no, I, I'm not. I'm not interviewing with those people. Right, right now, it's, you're probably right. You're probably right. I mean, they, uh, they, they, they're. It's a lying, uh, lying bunch of people. We try to get the word out as far, you know, as, as far and wide as possible. But you know, what you say reminds me of a comment that Bill Buckley, William F. Buckley Jr., once made. You know, liberals, liberals are uh, all for um, uh, you know hearing alternative uh, points of view to their own. And then they're shocked when they, dif- they discover that people do have opinions that differ with, with, with their own. And that's, that's really where we are now, that uh, there's this kind of, people talk about diversity, but they actually foment a cultural uh, situation where uh, we're living in an age of incredible conformity. 
incredible intellectual conformity. And um, you know, it's it's I, you know just I don't mean to flatter you, Devin, but but I you know you you really have been a beacon of light uh, in in your in your public service. Uh, you know, I, most people when they hear the term public ser servant, they scoff. But you, um, you're, you're, you, you actually uh, live up to that title. Well, you're, you're, you're very, very, very kind. Uh, but Roger, one of the things that I like about you. Um, so we're going to close close out this podcast. Um, obviously, you can go to the newcriterion.com, encounterbooks.com. You don't have to go to Amazon. But <laughs> when you're not participating at the New Criterion and you're not doing Encounter Books, you right. actually have a very interesting hobby and background. Uh, that I have myself. So a lot of people that know that uh, I grew up uh, uh, farming. Um, I still yes. farm today. Um, I had a grandfather that had grapes, um, and I've always been interested in the wine uh, business. And in mm -hmm. fact, I'm a small owner in some very small wineries uh, in, here in California. Uh, but you have the same hobby, and you actually write in your spare time uh, right. You evaluate uh, wines, and how on earth did you get yeah. into doing that? And where can they find some of your writing at? Right. Well, I just uh, fairly recently became a wine critic for the Spectator USA magazine, and so uh, people can go and look at my writing there. But I, I, when I graduated from college, I actually started a small wine importing company with a couple of friends, uh, and it, it it lasted for maybe a year. We actually did bring some wine in, but I discovered that the wine importing business was a little rougher than I had originally uh, envisioned. So I got out of it, but I now, now I, I formed that very critical component of the wine industry as the, the, the consumer. Uh, and um, I, 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 it's, it, it is fun to write about wine. And so I'm, I'm absolutely delighted to have this opportunity to do it. Spectator USA, that's it. It's, a, it's on the web and you can also it's a magazine you can buy in print or 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 see it on uh, see it on the web. Uh, you're like a Renaissance man, uh, Renaissance <laughs> man, uh, Roger. So thank you so much. This has been a, a great week uh, for the podcast, uh, Roger. I hope that you'll come back on at, at some point. Terrific, I'd love uh, to. Because I think people uh, have, have really uh, really enjoyed this. I know I know I have, and maybe we'll have you for an entire show uh, just okay. on just on wine. We you know we did that. Last year over Thanksgiving, I interviewed a local brewery here in my oh, really? district. Yeah, where we just we we talked about uh, you know how he got into into beer making and the different types of beers, which I, I learned a lot. So yeah, maybe we can have a show a uh, special show uh, just on wine that you and I would, I'm sure would enjoy. That'd be fun. Thanks. Great to thanks. Chat. Thanks again. This is Devin Nunes. We will catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Devin Nunes podcast. We invite you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And remember, you can download this podcast on iTunes or at DevonNunes.com. Storm clouds been gathering so long, I don't know. The darkness around us leaves no easy road. We started wondering if every road dead ends our dreams. It whips the dust up and rains pouring down. Good people struggling in we started wondering if we even matter at all. We'll take that hard road to happier days. Cause we've kept our American faith. Now it's not our first trial by fire like this. It's not the hard work. We've got the power to save it all here in our hands We'll take that hard road to happier days Cause we kept our American faith As we
afraid. That's why they call her the home of the brave. With a prayer and a purpose, we're already half the way there. We'll take that hard road to happier days. Cause we kept our American faith. Paid for by Devin Nunes Campaign Committee.